Hey folks, it's Fritgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Alps Panorama at the Northern Sea here in Farming Simulator 19. And I can see from where the curve is, like following that track, there is, I think, if we had manually gone round a second time and just kind of straightened that curve out a little bit better as we were going around the field, it probably would have worked a lot better. It would have worked in our favour a lot better than what we've got at the moment. But now, it does actually seem to be doing what I wanted it to do, which is just follow this really, really long curve all the way round. And as long as it keeps doing that, that's great. That's absolutely fine. I'm pleased with it. I'm quite happy to just let that keep going like that. It doesn't look like I'm going to need to nurse it at all now. So you can stay there and we will go this way. Back to you. We've got another 20,000 litres of grass to go and pick up. Which I will get now. I'm going to go down that shorter run and I'm going to pick up some of the mess that's around uh, just the bottom of that. I would estimate maybe another load and a half in here. Oops. I started it. I got this habit of pressing V and B together when I start up. Because I normally press V and B together when I... Um, go to do something, but I didn't when I stopped the tractor just now. I just turned the engine off, so it was still down on the ground. So I pressed B to start the forager up, but then I pressed V and lifted the pickup up off the ground. And yeah, that's, that's, that's not quite so helpful, is it? Right, it's, I think we're going to struggle a little bit to pick up all of this. But then I did say before I wasn't too concerned about picking up all of the little bits around the field. Because give it a day or two... And all those bits will disappear. That's one thing I love about Seasons. When you're not using Seasons, any little bits of grass that are left in fields are left there until the end of time. They never disappear. Whereas with Seasons, they quite conveniently rot away in the field. So if you've left an absolute pig's ear of a mess right across your field, it doesn't really matter because Seasons will come along and clean it all up for you. It's like, it, it, it's like a maid service comes along and it says oh i see you've made a terrible mess here don't worry don't worry don't don't you worry about the thing i will clean it all up for you and the maid service that is seasons comes along and cleans up every single little bit which is absolutely fantastic it really is it's brilliant now let's get over the clamp tip this one out and then we've got a bit more rolling to do the difficulty with Tipping this one out is I want to be over to this side as much as possible, but I can't get over to the side quite as much as I'd like or I'm going to get stuck, which I don't really want. So we're going to have to make sure I bring it forward a fair bit. Because the other thing I don't want to do is tip the thing over or um, I, I don't want to have the grass sort of rolling out the back of the clap, but... This, this is better. It's, it's getting over to the wall. It does mean that I'm having to pile it up quite high, which means that we are going to struggle with getting the tractor to do the rolling. But I think we'll be all right. So there, we've got that one in. We've definitely not got room to bring another trailer load in just yet. So we'll bring you over here and we will park you up right there like that. See, I've just got that little field there. That's the only other one that we've got to do. That one right there. Once it's done, the field is working on at the moment. That's all that's going to be left is that little tiny field there, which is going to be hay again. And then that's, I'm thinking that's probably going to be it. We'll do those two fields with hay and then we will see. We may want to do more hay after that. I don't really know. I'm thinking probably not. I'm thinking we've probably got enough hay once we've done, once we've done that bit there. We'll have a load of straw that we've got to deal with from the big field. It's another one, that, an, another issue that we're going to have to sort of process. Bring you down like that. Okay. I can at least get off of the end of it. Can I reverse my way back up onto the heap? Yes, I can. The great thing about the articulated steers is that the articulation does help us manoeuvre up over the heap. I would imagine, though, in real life, you wouldn't want to be using the actual articulation bit to lever yourself round too much, would you? Because that would put a massive amount of stress on the hydraulics that do the steering. So I, I don't know about that. I've, uh, not having driven one myself, I, I don't know what the limitations of them are. But 
that would be my guess is that it would cause like doing this levering it in order to get unstuck on something my guess is that that would put such a massive strain on the hydraulics that you would end up breaking something as anybody that does drive these big monstrous great big things for a living do let me know what's what's the verdict on that can you be a little bit aggressive with the steering or have you got to treat it like your great aunt mildred with a great big pot full of soup and her sunday best dress who is sitting on the seat beside you right you, you've got two situations either you can put the pedal to the metal and you can just go for it or you need to imagine that your great aunt Mildred is on her way to a church do, right? She's on her way to a church do. It's always a do, so it's not an event. It's always a do, or it is around here anyway. Um, so there's a church do, and she is taking along a large pot of soup. Now, naturally, she's got her Sunday best dress on because she's on her way to the do and uh, you, you only have your Sunday best dress, and she feels the need to hold said pot of soup instead of packing it in the very back of the car and um, sort of wrapping it up with something. No, she's got to hold that baby on her lap because she doesn't trust anything else to hold her precious soup. She has poured her heart and soul into that soup. It took her 14 hours of blood, sweat and toil to make that soup, and she'll be damned if she is going to allow anybody else or anything else to hold it. She will clutch it and hold on to her baby until she gets to the church. And then everybody can see the soup. Your job is to drive your great aunt Mildred to the church and deliver both her and the soup safely. If her soup ends up on her Sunday best dress, you can imagine the consequences. In fact, I don't even want to imagine the consequences. They are that severe. And I imagine many of you don't really want to dwell too much on those hideous, heinous consequences either. It, 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 honestly, it would be frightening. It would be absolutely terrifying and frightening if Great Aunt Mildred had some of her precious soup spilled onto her Sunday best dress. And so your driving is going to be the best driving you have ever done. You are going to be sweating more about this particular drive than you ever did when you first took your driving test. And that is my question. Do we drive as though Great Aunt Mildred is in the tractor with us, or do we drive with the pedal to the metal and no concern whatsoever? When driving a large tractor like this and relying on the steering like I am at the moment, I'm wiggling the steering in order to keep the traction and I'm not sort of too concerned about uh, the stress of the hydraulics. Should I be doing that? Should I be caning it and wiggling the hydraulics? Or should I be a little bit more like Great Aunt Mildred is sat beside me in the tractor and just going very, very carefully and, and um, doing it like that? So anybody that has experience with these big beasties, get into the comments section and let me know. I'm very curious about this. How much abuse can the hydraulics on the steering on these big articulated tractors take? Um, the only high articulated machines I've driven have been wheel loaders and telehandlers and then little rollers and stuff like that for doing groundworks. And, well, rollers aren't really known for getting stuck. They do slide sideways sometimes, but you can't really do anything with the roller with that. Uh, the wheel loader... I used to... Nobody said whether I should or I shouldn't, but I mean, the hydraulics look fairly substantial, and I'm usually fairly aware of what a hydraulic pipe is able to do, um, or a hydraulic ram. Um, so I would use the the sideways... You know, I would turn the steering wheel to nudge bales and that on a load when I was loading up a, a lorry load, that sort of thing. Um, but not excessively so. I didn't want to... I'm, it's not just the, the steering when doing something like that. I'm also sort of very much aware that when I'm loading a load, if, if you're pushing sideways with an arm on a wheel loader, right, that arm is specifically engineered and designed to go up and down. Right, That load is specifically engineered and designed to move up and down and to lift up and down, and that's where it puts the pressure. And so it's built to have the vertical pressure it's not 
built to withstand extreme horizontal pressure, right? Uh, pushing it sideways is really not something that you want to be doing. So if you're going to nudge a bale, you do so extremely carefully. So my caution with nudging things sideways and using the steering to nudge a little bit of a thing sideways wasn't born out of respect for the hydraulics on the steering. Honestly, that didn't even come into it. I didn't really consider that being an option. It was the fact that the machine itself was not built for twisting sideways. Uh, the, the main arm is not built for twisting sideways. It's not designed to do that. And it was that's the reason that I would uh, sort of treat it quite carefully. Uh, be more an, an Aunt Mildred sort of situation than it would be a um, just hammer it and hope. You know, ha hammer and hope is, is, is all well and good, but sometimes... You, you do need to be a little bit more gentle. It's a bit like driving a swing shovel as well. When I mean, driving an excavator, um, they're designed to shift tons and tons of dirt, right from even the little small ones. It is still designed to move tons of dirt. It might take a little bit longer to move said tons, um, but they are designed to move large quantities of material from one point to another. But they're, it's vertical. It's all designed to be vertical load. And the whole thing with the excavator is vertical load. Yes, you can swivel sideways, but it's not designed to put pressure on it when it's swiveling sideways. It's designed to carry a load sideways and not push a load sideways. That's one of the most damaging things you can do to an excavator is move things sideways with it. It's just not designed to do that. Um, and so when you're using an excavator, you do not push things sideways with it. You scoop it and then you carry it sideways. You don't put pressure on it sideways. And it's a very, very important thing, that um, little thing, it, it's a very important thing to remember. So when it comes to articulated steering, I got no idea, I really don't. Right, I'm gonna leave that one there for a minute. I'm just gonna switch the engine off and we're gonna go and have a look and see what has happened to our dear tractor over here. Right, it's, oh, I see, he's just gone up against a tree over here. He's still doing a really good job, actually, I mean, he's. He's left a little bit right there, which is unusual, it's got to be said. doesn't normally do such a thing. But I'm guessing that's just because of the way the field is. So I'm bringing you back over here. It backed around, it did everything it was supposed to do, and then it got up to the tree. So I'm going to go like that. I'm going to hope that it's sending it the right way. It is sending it the right way. It's just going to sort of straighten itself up a little bit. I'm actually really pleased with how this field has turned out. Like looking at that, the way that it's managed to do. Yeah, we sure, we had some issues to start with, but if I'd gone a second round around the field myself and just kind of straightened that curve out a little bit, it's, it's knowing the limitations of the thing that we're using and I didn't fully understand the limitations of the AI vehicle extension using this set of mowers. The more, there's more limitations on this than there is with the combine. The combine does tend to behave differently. Although I'm still going based a lot on what I did with the program in FS17, not now in FS19. Um, big difference between the two. Right, um, uh, you, that's the one that I'm looking for. Right. We've got the 100% compaction. The reason I'm still going is because I want to just compact this little bit here a tiny bit more. Just feel that that needs a little bit more work and sort of over the edge. This end of it is absolutely fine and I've got no qualms whatsoever about it. I, I don't think that we're going to have any issues with the vehicle getting up here but there's this little clump right here this is the bit that i think is going to cause us some problems right here this bit that i'm now shunting about on so if i can roll this down a little bit more that's just going to make our lives a little bit easier i think bring that up there right, right over to this side there it's, it's starting to blend out a bit more as well now that's better oops Okay, now I'm getting stuck, which I don't really want to do. See, that's, that's starting to look a lot better now. I think I might leave that pretty much as it is, and we'll go and get another load, and we'll bring that in, and I'm going to 
drag it down that side and we'll tip it down there. And see how that pans out. So I'll bring you in here. I reckon that we've got about a load and a half of silage left in the big field. Plus we've got this what's over in a small field over here. There's probably another load and a half in there. Um, being as how thick it is on the ground. Um, so we could be looking at three more loads to go into that silage clamp. Which is a lot of silage actually. Let's just have a look here a second. How much have I got in here? Oops. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do this. Uh, we've got over half a million litres of silage. 540,000 litres of silage in there right now. That is a massive amount of silage. Right? There's a lot of silage in there. And if we got three more loads, that's another 270,000. Uh, it's going to be 600. It's going to be over 800,000 litres of silage, which, yes... We've easily got room for 3 million litres of silage in there, but we don't need 3 million litres of silage just yet. We may end up needing 3 million litres of silage. And something that I'm going to be looking at getting pretty soon is a standing um, TMR mixer. Something that we can just plonk down in the yard and then we can bring big loads of TMR over to it. Uh, well... We can bring big loads of silage and loads of bales and, and, and everything. Just dump all of that into it and do it like that. Or we'll be using an auto-load pecan mixer. You know, the big mega mammoth. Um, well, it says mammoth, but I'm pretty sure that is actually mammoth. Um, so the, the mega mammoth pecan mixer. Um, Smoodalini, actually, I think it was. A said that he's got i don't know I'm, I'm pretty sure he probably provided me with a link as well but he said he's got one that does auto load the bales and he that's what he uses it auto loads bales and um i don't know about the silage though i don't know about the i don't know about loose silage so whether or not it loads the loose silage that could be a bit different but then well, i've got an idea for that we've got a milling machine that we'll be able to use the milling machine is just a priceless machine it, it picks up everything that one's been around since at least fs15 i don't remember using it in fs13 but it, i mean it could very well have been around it could have been converted from fs13 i definitely used it a lot in fs15 and i used it again a lot in fs17 it is a fantastic machine it picks up everything so that one is really good it can be a little bit slow for picking stuff up but i think that's a small price to pay for what we actually get which is a beautiful machine that picks everything up off of the ground. I'm just going to have a look. Can I see the tractor anymore? Can't really see the tractor up over there anymore. Well, there's no can't really at all. Let me go like that and just see where it is. Um, J up in the field. Wait a minute. Oh, no. I was looking at that. I was looking at the J. Hang on, let me go in here. I was looking at this, and I was thinking that it was up over here in this field for some strange reason. Um, it didn't sort of click that, that it is in actually the right place. Um, so, no, that one is fine. We, we don't have to worry about it. I'm just going to scoop up a little bit of this, and I'm going to turn around like that, sharper than I probably should. And I'm going to get that, and I'm going to go up here, and we're going to try and pick up some of that extra that is on the ground up there. And then we'll come back down, and we'll get both of those runs there, because we're, we're, we're spending too long running around the field otherwise. So I'll go through here and grab that bit there. Yeah, I didn't think I'd get the bit that was right down in the ditch. I didn't realistically think that we were going to be picking that up. And we can anchor around this way. And go for that next big curb run there. So we've actually got we've got most of this. Right, there's very little of the grass that is going to be left behind. And then I can bring you round this way. Turn like that. And now we can head up across the field. And we come back down. And that's... Yeah, I'm not too worried about those little... There's a couple little bits left. But it's not going to make any difference, really. We might try and just zoom through it when we finish up the field completely I get this piece right here we're then what did I say I said about load and a half I'm not sure that we are going to get a load and a half out of this field looking at what we've got left over
Well, that's about all we've got time for in today's episode, so we're going to go and take a little bit of a break. We need to chill out on the beach, relax, and build up some strength. So while we're doing that, if you've enjoyed the episode, then could you please head down below and give us a like? And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.